The City of Nina is pleased to provide video recordings of City Council meetings. Nina residents can get information about City Council meetings, City Committee meetings, meeting agendas, and other documents from the City website, www.ninagov.org. Nina residents can express their opinions about City issues by contacting the Mayor's office, contacting their city alderman, or completing the electronic feedback form on the city website. All public portions of the meetings are recorded in entirety and are not edited. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call to order the City of Nina Common Council meeting for Wednesday, May 1st, 2024. Thank you so much to everyone who is here tonight attending. This is a really special night. And we're grateful and thankful, happy to welcome you here as we're celebrating special employee recognition awards tonight. So thank you for joining us. We'll start the meeting with the roll call, which the clerk will call. And please indicate your presence on your roll call device. Alderperson Boyette. Here. Erickson. Here. Hillstrom. Here. Ellis. Here. Weber is excused. Call now. Here. Steiner. Here. Here. And Council President Borchert. Here. Council President Borchert, will you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would you like to make a motion to that? It, go ahead. There's a, you know additional people here. For okay, the other I'd like too. I'd like to make a motion to um, adjust the uh, oh, brain. <laughs> the agenda for this evening and move up the um, proclamations to the first item so that the folks don't have to stick around for all the employee stuff. That's all right. Second. Thank you. There's a motion and a second to move up the proclamations to the first item. All those in favor say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? That passes. Thank you. Of course. Again, another council meeting. I'm going to apologize for the cold that I continue to have that's hanging on. We'll try to get through reading all four of the proclamations that we have this evening, starting with uh, the office of um, the clerk, uh, Professional Municipal Clerks Week, which is May 5th through May 11th. Where is the Office of the Professional Municipal Clerk, a time-honored and vital part of local government, exists throughout the world, and whereas the Office of the Professional Municipal Clerk is the oldest among public servants, whereas the Office of the Professional Municipal Clerk provides the professional link between the citizens, the local governing bodies, and agencies of government at other levels, and whereas, and whereas professional municipal clerks have pledged to be ever mindful of their neutrality and impartiality, rendering equal service to all, whereas the professional municipal clerk serves as the information center on functions of local government and community, whereas professional municipal clerks continually strive to improve the administration of the affairs of the Office of the Professional Municipal Clerk through participation in education programs, seminars, workshops, and the annual meetings of their state, provincial, county, and international professional organizations, Whereas it is most appropriate that we recognize the accomplishments of the Office of the Professional Municipal Clerk. Now, therefore, I, Jane Lang, Mayor of the City of Nina, Wisconsin, do recognize the week of May 5th through the 11th, 2024, as Professional Municipal Clerks Week, and further extend appreciation to our Professional Municipal Clerk, Char Nagel, and to all Professional Municipal Clerks for the vital services they perform and their exemplary dedication to the communities they represent. And special thank you to Char Nagel and all that she does for our community. Mm -hmm. 
Next is the Letter Carrier's Food Drive Day for May 11th. Whereas every year on the second Saturday in May, letter carriers across the country collect non-perishable food as part of the nation's largest one-day food drive, distributing the donations to local food banks. And whereas the letter carrier's Stamp Out Hunger Food Drive is just one example of how letter carriers work to make a difference in the lives of those they serve, since the pilot drive was held in 1991, more than 1.82 billion pounds of food have been collected. And whereas we recognize all letter carriers for their hard work and their commitment to their communities, all of the food collected in our community stays in our community and we support carriers' efforts to help those in need <coughs> in our community. And whereas we also recognize the noteworthy milestone of 32 years that the National Letter Carrier Food Drive celebrates in 2024. Now therefore be it resolved that we, the City Council of Nina, Wisconsin, by the authority vested in us, do hereby proclaim this 11th day of May 2024 as Letter Carrier's Food Drive Day in the City of Nina, County of Winnebago, Wisconsin. And we encourage the citizens of our community to support the food drive by placing non-perishable food items in or near your mailbox on Food Drive Day. Your letter carrier will pick it up while delivering the mail, and together we can help to feed our hungry. And that is signed and sealed for the 11th day of May. Next is the Menasha Corporation 175th anniversary day, which is coming up on May 24th. Whereas in 1849, a wooden pail factory was founded in Menasha, Wisconsin. In 1852, Elijah D. Smith bought the pail factory and built it into the company known today as Menasha Corporation. Elisha D. Smith was a respected member of the community and was greatly admired for his community spirit and generosity. Whereas in 1872, the Pale Factory was renamed Menasha Woodenware Company and was Menasha's largest employer and the largest woodenware manufacturer in the Midwest. Whereas in 1927, Menasha Woodenware entered the corrugated business, changing the future course of the company through innovation. Whereas beginning in 1955 with a key investment in a plastics business, the foundation was established for Menasha Woodenware's entry into the reusable plastic packaging market and today's Orbis Corporation, a subsidiary of Menasha Corporation. Whereas in 1962, Menasha Woodenware changed its name to Menasha Corporation and shortly thereafter began operations in Nina following a fire that destroyed its historic plant in Menasha. Whereas Menasha Corporation grew and expanded throughout the United States and into Mexico, Canada, and Europe, from the 1970s through the 2000s. Whereas today, Menasha Corporation is comprised of two primary operating subsidiaries, Menasha Packaging Company and Orbis Corporation, backed by 175 years of family ownership, Menasha Corporation is one of the oldest privately held manufacturing companies in America. Whereas the city of Nina and Menasha Corporation the city of Nina and the Menasha Corporation share a strong legacy of community betterment and a commitment to caring about its people. Whereas on May 24th, 2024, we have chosen to honor the Menasha Corporation's 175 year history and its past and present contributions to the city of Nina. Now therefore be it resolved that I, Jane Lang, mayor of the city of Nina, Wisconsin, do hereby proclaim Wednesday, May 24th, 2024, as Menasha Corporation's 175th anniversary day in the city of Nina and encourage residents to celebrate the benefits of being home to the company founded by a visionary progressive leader. And we look forward to our continued partnership in the coming years. And now, Poppy Days. Whereas the annual distribution of poppies by the American Legion, Nina Post 33, and the American Legion Auxiliary Unit 33 have been officially recognized and endorsed by governmental leaders since 1922, and whereas the poppies are assembled by disabled veterans and the proceeds of this worthy fundraising campaign are used exclusively for the benefit of disabled and needy veterans and the widows and orphans of deceased veterans, and whereas the basic purpose of the annual distribution of poppies by the American Legion and Auxiliary is eloquently reflected in the desire to honor the dead by helping the living. 
Now therefore be it resolved that I, Jane Lang, Mayor of the City of Nina, do declare May 23rd and May 24th to be Poppy Days and do hereby encourage citizens of this community to recognize the merits of this cause by contributing generously to its support through their donation of poppies on the days set aside for the distribution of these symbols of appreciation for the sacrifices of our honored dead. I urge all patriotic citizens to wear a poppy as evidence of our gratitude to the men and women of this country who have risked their lives in defense of the freedoms which we continue to enjoy as American citizens. And that is signed and sealed this first day of May, 2024. And I appreciate um, members of the American Legion being present. So thank you for attending. I'm Patty Julius, co-chair of this year's American Legion Auxiliaries Poppy Program. On behalf of the American Legion Post 33 and the American Legion Auxiliary Unit 33, we are pleased to be present this evening to witness the signing of our Poppy Proclamation for the City of Nina by Mayor Jane. This will begin the annual observance of the month of May being Poppy Month and May 24th being National Poppy Day. Our official poppy days will be May 23rd and 24th prior to our Memorial Day festivities. Many Nina businesses have supported our patriotic service organization for many successful years, raising funds for local and statewide veterans, active duty military and their families. We are looking forward to another successful year in remembering our heroes of today and the past and the sacrifices made by all. We also especially thank Mayor Jane Ling in making this observ observance official. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Sorry, I had to reshuffle. <laughs> and now we'll move on to the portion of tonight's meeting that will be presentation of employee recognition awards for our 25 year anniversary, 30 year anniversaries, and then our exemplary performance awards. And I will join Chief Olson, who is helping out tonight, um, particularly because our Director of Human Resources, Amy Fairchild, has laryngitis, and I'm really not much better, so. I just like to, um, and should have done this from up in front, sorry. Um, I just want to briefly say how much I appreciate all of the employees at the city of Nina, how dedicated you are, how hard you work for the city, and how committed you are to doing your very best every day. Um, know that you are appreciated, and that is so clear and evident in our employees who have faithfully served for so many years for the city. So just know that you are deeply appreciated. All right, good evening. As Mayor Lang said, I've been asked to assist with recognizing these employees who have reached a milestone in their careers with the city of Nina and celebrating 25 and 30 years of service. We'll start with those who have reached 25 years of service with the city. So if you're present, uh, please come forward when I call your name. Everyone at once, correct? All right. Amy Wagner from the police department. Anthony Leighton from the fire department. Jason Calkins from the fire department. Jason Parabone, Paraboom from the fire department. <coughs> Kathy Talks Too Soft Volker 
from the police department. Now retired. I had to get one last dig on her. Kevin Korth from the fire department. Melissa Kesmer from the library. Uh, Michelle Tauscher from IS. Nancy Baird from the library. Stu Zools from the police department. And Tom Van Sambeek from the police department. Next are those reaching 30 years of service with the city of Nina. First is Christopher Johnson from Parks and Rec. Next is Jim Peglow from Fire. Larry Reckner from Water. Patty Framuth from Finance. And Patrick Engelberth from Public Works. <laughs> Special. <laughs> I am special. I know. <laughs> okay. Thank you to each of you for your dedication and contributions. Transitioning, our next set of recognitions are the Employee Exemplary Awards. These awards are issued to employees who have gone above and beyond in their day to day performance and have provided contributions to either their department or the city as a whole, which has resulted in cost savings or other forms of process improvement. I will begin with recognizing those within the police department before allowing other department heads to recognize nominees from their department. And I'm going to ask that all the department heads come down to be who are presenting come down next. Week. Okay. If you're a department head, you didn't hear that. When it's your turn, come down here. All right. Come down here at this point. Yeah. Oh, right now. Okay. Yeah. We're, we're going to put you in order, okay? So, Peak Library, Finance. That's Chris. And there's a couple that are Rick and Brad are being recognized at the same time. Okay. And these two are being recognized at the same time. Okay. So, it's uh, Library, Finance, Community Development. Public Works, Dolus. Tony is doing. Tony's doing this. Okay, and then culture. Okay. All right. So the first person I'd like to call down is Captain Tom Van Sambeek. <laughs> so uh, I nominated Tom because, uh, as you all know, we just built a very, very nice police training center. It took many years to get this built, and uh, a lot of people were behind this build, including the mayor and the council, people on the committee, and this building turned out to be really, really nice. But one of the reasons it turned out so nice is Tom's brain is amazing in all aspects. But when it comes to technology, and our building is state of the art. Uh, I am not a state of the art person, and technology is not my thing. And Tom was a great partner in this. And with his ability, uh, I think our training center is the best training center in the state of Wisconsin, not just because it's new, but because of every the thought that was put into it with the technology, and it's going to be there for many, many years. So I, I always, he's the captain of professional staff, but I affectionately call him the captain of things because he's in charge of all things and, and uh, does an amazing job. So I always say that Tom is not ordinary, he's extraordinary. So I really appreciate Tom. Uh, everyone in the police department appreciates Tom, and 
and he's very well deserving of this award. So thank you very much. Uh, next, Assistant Chief Jeff Bernice will talk. Uh, I'd like to call down Amanda Mo. The improper administrative management of a law enforcement evidence facility can be detrimental to the organization, but that's not the case when it comes to the Nina Police Department's evidence room. In fact, it is undoubtedly one of the best evidence facilities in the state of Wisconsin. The reason is because of one extraordinary person, the department's evidence custodian, Amanda Moe. She has dedicated 22 years to the city of Nina Police Department's evidence program where she is certified as a specialist through the state and international organizations. She has refined the process and created a well-organized and controlled system that she maintains with pride and dedication. In 2023, approximately 967 items of evidence were collected and, in, and uh, incorporated into the evidence room. This added a vast amount of inventory, excuse me, this added to the vast amount of inventory of well over 5,000 items in the vault. Each item must be preserved, maintained, recorded, and sent for additional analysis, available for court proceedings, and disposed and returned based on state statutes. In addition to the supervision of these items, proper chain of custody must be maintained, and the whereabouts of every individual item must be known to the exact location from a pill to a vehicle. Amanda also assists with evidence processing and collection at crime scenes. In 2023, she assisted with a wide range of cases from home invasion robberies to attempted homicides. In each case, she recovered valuable evidence that led to the apprehension and prosecution of these criminals. Amanda maintains a department, or excuse me, Amanda maintains the department's drug drop box what is used by the community to dispose of unused medication. In 2023, 828 pounds of prescription medication was destroyed. Amanda is a major asset to the city of Nina and an exceptional member to the police department. Her amazing evidence management skills are example to others. Her knowledge of evidence collection is the model to all and her dedication to the cause is second to none. Amanda, we'd like to present you with this award. Thank you for your service. Uh, next, I'd like to call Jane Eastman. I would like to recognize communication technician Jane Eastman for her dedicated performance during this past year. Jane is assigned to the police department's front desk where she answers incoming phone calls, assists community in our lobby, our lobby maintains, obtains data for officers, and serves as a segue for various components within the organization. She is constantly seeking out additional work to accomplish for the benefit of the department. She maintains a high level of professionalism and demonstrates a strong level of customer service skills. Jane maintains the highest standards of work ethics and displays a maximum drive for fulfilling her job responsibilities. Jane is also a member of the department's employee wellness committee, which created and implemented a wellness program for the organization last year. This was a proactive initiative to provide certain coping mechanisms and stress relievers to maintain a positive mental health and resiliency due to the profession's traumatic and stressful encounters. The project was a major success that helped many employees both professionally and personally. The project possibly saved marriages, rescued families, and possibly saved a life. Various other agencies have requested assistance in the development of their programs by using our project as a model. Jane was a major contributor and researcher in this program and was a key asset to its success. In conclusion, her dedication 
has directly impacted the welfare of the members of the department and the community. She is a proven performer, distinguishes herself daily, and truly deserves this exceptional performance award. Thank you, Jane. So I'm pleased to present this award to Lori Subot. Um, in January, the Technical Services Library uh, Department at the library encountered a full-time acquisitions and interlibrary loan role vacancy. Lori adeptly and willingly assumed the responsibilities for adult acquisitions while continuing to oversee youth acquisitions in her part-time role. Despite the additional workload, Lori exhibited a resilient and positive demeanor, effectively fulfilling her obligations. Her unwavering dedication ensured the timely acquisition, cataloging, and availability of new, new materials for all library patrons. Furthermore, Lori gathered, reviewed, and updated the procedures for the incoming staff me the staff member would need. Upon the new employee's transition from a different department within the library, Lori took it upon herself to ensure the newcomer felt welcomed and integrated into the team. Lori's <laughs> thoughtful actions did not go unnoticed by the new employee, who felt grateful for her warm welcome. As the days went by, Lori continued to check in on the newcomer, offering guidance and support whenever needed. Her kindness and inclusivity created a positive atmosphere within the team, fostering a sense of camaraderie and collaboration. Thanks to Lori's efforts, the new employee quickly found their footing and began to thrive in their new role within the library. Lori's actions were a shining example of how a simple gesture of kindness can significantly impact someone's experience in a new department. Her colleagues and I recognize Lori's remarkable dedication and diligence, her willingness to shoulder extra tasks and contribute to training initiatives underscores her strong work ethic and allegiance to the library's goals. Despite the increased demands, Lori remained cheerful and supportive, readily extending her assistance and guidance to fellow team members. Her efforts were instrumental in ensuring patrons had access to new materials and the new employee success. Lori, I'm grateful to have you on my team every day. I would like to call up Amber Adams. Thank you. I'm here to present Amber with the Exemplary Performance Award. I have nominated her for many reasons. First and foremost, I, her work ethic is remarkable. She does whatever it takes to get the job done. She always services our customers with a professional and positive attitude and her follow through with customers, departments, and overall projects is incredible. Another reason for this nomination was in regard to this year's property taxes. We, uh, they were put on hold due to a very external circumstance that was out of our control. And Amber just uh, took that and handled it with patience, professionalism, and put our residents first. She made sure that the residents would not receive an incorrect property tax bill and that she would do whatever it takes to make sure that happened. And that was her number one priority. Her passion for the residents and attention to detail was very evident during this situation. In addition, Amber has been short staffed for this past year, and she made sure that residents didn't feel this void at all. And uh, she worked nonstop to service the customers while also getting all of her managerial responsibilities completed in a timely and accurate manner. In addition, she also has been researching a new tax software that she is in the middle of implementing. And, uh, just keeps taking on more and more. And I just feel that the finance department is extremely fortunate to have Amber on our team. She sets the bar high in, for our department and she's an asset to our team. I'm blessed and lucky to have Amber as one of my key employees. Good evening. I'd like to call Rick Meverden and Brad Schmidt to join me in the spotlight. My name is Chris Hayes. I'm the Director of Community Development. 
I would like I would like to extend my congratulations and appreciation to GIS coordinator Rick Mavardin and community development director deputy community development deputy director uh, Brad Schmidt for their outstanding performance and exemplary dedication in identifying, modifying, and documenting recent challenges with our stormwater utility program. Rick, through his meticulous investigation, his utilization of both current and historical GIS data, and the employment of high-level mapping and analytical techniques, was able to establish the city's GIS impervious area map as a true representation of our impervious area within the city. His many months of hard work and research have ensured accuracy in the, storm, in the city's stormwater utility impervious, impervious database, the foundation of which our billing is generated. Brad, upon becoming aware of the challenges facing our utility, took the initiative and a tenacious attitude to ensure that a high level of integrity was brought to the stormwater program. This overall project was of updating our stormwater billing process required coordination of a number of city staff from several departments. Brad's effort to bring all these necessary parties together and to coordinate a team effort to resolve these longstanding challenges has contributed significantly, significantly to the integrity of the stormwater utility program. Rick and Brad's commitment to excellence and their tireless dedication to ensuring, ensuring accuracy have not only saved the stormwater utility valuable resources, but have also upheld our commitment to fairness and integrity in our operations. Their initiative and expertise has significantly contributed to the improvements of our process and the enhancement of our service delivery. I would like to express our deepest gratitude to Rick and Brad for their invaluable contributions. Their exemplary performance serves as a shining example to their colleagues and embodies the core value of our organization. Congratulations and thank you both for your efforts. I'm Jerry Kaiser. I'm the director of public works. I'm a man of few words, so don't let the low word count in any way uh, diminish my appreciation for the people I'll be calling up. Um, first person uh, is una unable to make it tonight. Uh, Assistant Superintendent uh, Trevor Griesbach. Um, public works Superintendent Radke had a major health issue in 2023 that sidelined him for about two months. The assistant superintendent, Trevor Griesbach, took the reins and led the department operations, allowing them to continue to run smoothly during Greg's absence. Trevor's leadership and dedication allowed the department to function during a very difficult time. So I appreciate Trevor's efforts for that. Secondly, I'd like to call down uh, Office Manager Lisa Murkowski. Lisa was relocated to the City Hall lobby while our elevator was down for a major upgrade. <laughs> um, the relocation was intended to be for about five weeks, but due to scheduling and material delivery delays, it turned out to be about five months. Given the temporary location, she became the point person for everyone coming into the building and assisted all to the best of her ability with patience and grace. Even though there were many disruptions to her normal work duties, she was able to stay positive and productive during that time. So thanks for your efforts, Lisa. Thank you.
Hi, my name is Anthony Mock. I'm the director of Nina Water Utility. I'd like to ask that uh, Andy Call and Jessica Stone please come up to the front. <coughs> Thank you. Um, Jessica and Andy have been instrumental in the integration of new endpoints into the billing system. Those are water endpoints, uh, which are also used for sewer billing and proactively addressing billing system inaccuracies and issues. Even though this has been an extremely difficult process, they both can, can consistently demonstrate a high level of competency, patience, and strong team working skills in cooperation with their fellow finance department employees, water utility employees, and public works employees. Both Jessica and Andy's level of communication is outstanding, and their ability to engage customers in a positive and compassionate manner is unparalleled. Thank you both very much. And I think uh, we have some uh, more folks that want to say some nice words too. Well, finance also uh, nominated Jessica and Andy and I have nominated you as well. Uh, and I would like to read what we had to say for you, Jessica. And I feel very fortunate to have such wonderful employees in my department. I'm pretty lucky. <laughs> um, I, like I said, I have a pleasure to award yet another employee on my team, Jessica. Um, Jessica has dramatically increased the level of service provided by her utility billing function, both operationally and from a customer service standpoint. Operationally, Jessica has been central to a full billing system audit, ensuring the integrity of our data and the amounts charged to our customers by reviewing eight different types of charges across 11,000 accounts and over 12,000 water meters, one person. And Jessica went above and beyond to complete this audit, primarily due to her, uh, during her first year in this position, a time period that you're typically just learning what you're doing in training. On the customer service side, our customers are enjoying the benefits of Jessica's attention to prompt billing and customer response times. As an example of her efforts, customers previously only had the option to call into our department when moving in or out of a property to exchange water service. Through use of seamless docs web application, customers now can schedule meter readings online at any time, increasing convenience for them and reducing customer contact points for our team. Always looking ahead for efficiency, Jessica is looking forward to creating an electronic billing option for our customers, in addition to creating links between internal applications to streamline processes. Listed here are only a few of many examples of Jessica's contributions to our improved utility billing program. Jessica is a tremendous asset to our team and a fantastic representative of our city for our customers to work with. We, we appreciate you very much, Jessica. Thank you. Final individual recognition. Oh, okay. Well, I'll just do that one. Okay. Sorry, Mike. I'm trying to keep track of the list and it's all. All right. Thank you. Um, the Department of Legal and Administrative Services recognizes uh, Becky DeWitt for um, her contributions in that department. Becky has exceeded expectations in all areas in her relatively short time here at the city of Nina since December of 2022. Even when dealing with the most extremely trying family circumstances over the last eight plus months, she always thinks through how her necessary adjustments to work schedules and needs will impact the department, her teammates, and the entire city in general then comes with her solutions before making any requests. Notwithstanding how profoundly she and her family have been impacted by their personal crisis, 
She has not missed a beat in performing her duties at a high and efficient manner, contributing above and beyond to ever meet the ever-present needs of all the department's legal challenges. A couple of examples of her having gone above and beyond are last year when she nearly single-handedly revised and rewrote the records retention schedule for the police department, and then both last year and this also did a major edit and rewrite of the police department's state-based annual report. Neither of these things were her sole responsibility, but both were offered to assist a few uh, fellow department heads with critical needs fulfillment. Becky epitomizes exemplary performance as an employee and public servant. She was unable to be here this evening. Now I'll turn it over to Mike. Good evening. I'm really proud of Maggie. She's not here tonight. She's participating in a park and recreation program on the pickleball, pickleball courts at Washington Park. So good for her. Uh, Maggie joined our team just over a year ago. She has embraced the challenges and opportunities that come for her in her new position. Uh, just, to, just today, I walked out of my office and she was on a long 10-hour phone call. And I could just tell it was just one of those calls that just kept going and going and going. And every answer came out of her mouth with a smile. Um, in, my, in my submission, I said she can even smile through an email, and that exemplifies Maggie. She's just a constant, positive individual. She said to me today, though, sometimes she does roll her eyes, and I can appreciate that. So good on her. But she's brought and undertook the redesign of our recreation guide and gave it a fancy new look and touch. She's begun to take all of her notes that are Department meetings that happen every Tuesday keeps us on track and in order, even though we still rabbit trail and squirrel trail too much, but that's okay. We have fun. She's also helped us reorganize our department policies, um, getting them all into one place. Those go to the commission for approval this coming uh, May 15th, so we're very proud to have those all in one place and reorganized. Uh, and has developed the sponsorship tracking system. Uh, many of our programs are done in partnerships with our community members. Uh, and where they're making a donation and sponsoring our programs and just in order to keep recognizing them, praising them for their help and investment in our community is, is a task that she's undertaken. And finally, I'd like to recognize Maggie for her efforts in putting together our annual report this year. Uh, took that fully and embraced it. It's a great way of keeping our park and recreation history in one place for future generations to take a look at what we did several years ago and into the future. Thank you very much. final um, exemplary performance award that we're presenting tonight is to the entire culture team, which was led by Lori Raditz in finance, Stephanie Schott, Parks and Rec, Char Nagel as the city clerk, Clint Williams from Parks, Greg Robluski from Fire, Holly Engelman from the Department of Legal and Ad Administrative Services, Kathleen Benke from Community Development, Kevin Prost, Public Works, Lindsay Pointer, Police Administration, Michelle Tauscher, Information Systems, Nancy Baird, Library, Nash Herbst, Water Treatment, Richie Zabrowski, Library, Stephanie Gruse, Police Patrol, Scott Pellegrini, City Services. And could they all come forward at this point? Beginning in late 2022, we initiated a culture evaluation for the city of Nina. Utilizing the expertise of a third party, the UTEC group, employees representing all departments within the city, were nominated to participate in what would later become our culture team. And these are some of the members here before you tonight. Going into this process, no one knew exactly what would be expected of those involved. Still, each participant was actively involved and took ownership in their role to make this initiative a success. The team was required to participate in a three-day workshop hosted by a third-party company known as the UTEC Group, where they worked together to create the city's mission statement and core values. UTEC trained the team on how to properly roll out the city's new mission and values, 
and thus began the hard work which was to come. Each of the four co core values required a training session when the culture team met with the employee group to discuss the definition of the value, identify the barriers which may impede the success of the value, and identify solutions for ensuring the value is operationalized within the city. Given the number of employees within the city, uh, this meant there were multiple different training sessions held for each value. After each session, the feedback was then collected and the team identified common themes in an effort to address what could be seen as potentially problematic or as potentially a success within the city's culture. The level of time and commitment to this program, as well as the ability for those involved to continue to maintain their normally scheduled duties, rises to that of a, an exemplary standard. Not only that, it meets the very mission and values that they have set forth for the city to follow. And we thank you all very much. Actually, um, the final thing that I would like to do before I go back up there and actually we're doing another like photo opportunity before we start the rest of the meeting, but I really wanted to recognize our retiring IS director, Joe Weninger, and he is here this evening with his family. 39 years of service, 39 years and two months. So um, unbelievable that you have um, just demonstrated that level of commitment that level of expertise and that dedication to the city of Nina. We are incredibly grateful for all that you have done and we just appreciate you so much. Um, as I said earlier today, we're like a family and we're sorry to see you leaving, but you're not actually going to be able to leave because we will still be calling on you and asking for your advice. <laughs> And we will, I know we will be seeing you at the city um, concerts at Shattuck Park. So look out, <laughs> we'll be visiting you. <laughs> so thank you so much, Joe, for all you have done and the example that you have set for all of us of dedication. the ends near. <laughs> uh, I, I do want to say that it's been a pleasure over the last 39 years to uh, serve a great community like Nina. Uh, the relationships forged by uh, with co-workers, elected officials, members of the community, um, they're treasured and they won't be uh, quickly forgotten. Um, little did I know and on Monday, February 2nd, 1985 when I walked through the front doors over here that uh, this would be where I'd serve out the rest of my career and uh, I guess Mark Tra Twain was correct when he said if you find a job you enjoy you're never gonna have to work again and that's exactly how I feel with uh, everybody I, I work with here everybody uh, like Jane said it's one big family um, you know I was reflecting with Jane a little bit uh, a couple weeks ago on where it all started uh, and it was kind of the simple days I refer to that as the city had five computer terminals connected to a mid-range computer. It was only operational from 7.30 to 4, Monday through Friday, uh, which has grown with the help of uh, my uh, staff and, and employees and, and elected officials here to uh, what, what's managed now is uh, over 3,000 uh, devices and user profiles and it's a 24-7, 365 <laughs> operation now. So um, the younger generations here probably would be shocked that when I started, there was no internet, if you can believe that. 
But along with that, there was no cybersecurity issues either. So uh, as Jane said, you know, we've both myself and my family have become very fond of uh, the community here, and uh, we're going to be hanging at the Thursday lunch in the park, the Wednesday night concerts, the very Merry Christmas, and uh, we're going to have, uh, especially the four youngest one there, Nicole, we're going to be back to the library all the time because that's their favorite spot in the city. So uh, thank you for a great 39 years here. very difficult. Amy's giving me sign language to remind you there are cookies um, afterwards uh, if you'd like to grab one. Um, at this point, I, I think we plan for the Poppy Committee, to the auxiliary, to come forward and, and do uh, signing of the proclamation. The next item on the agenda is introduction and confirmation of mayor's appointments. Is there any objection to the unanimous consent of approval for the appointment of Kristen Sandvik to the Sustainable Nina Committee for a three-year term ending April 2027? And the reappointment of Mark Keating to the Nina Menasha Joint Fire Commission for a three-year term ending May 2027? Is there any objection to unanimous consent? Seeing none, those appointments are confirmed. And I believe Kristen Sandvik is here to be sworn in to the Sustainable Nina Committee. Thank you. The clerk will come down and swear you in at the podium. I, Kristen Sandvik, having been appointed, having been appointed, a member of, a member of, Sustainable Nina Committee, Sustainable Nina Committee, of the City of Nina, of the City of Nina, Winnebago County, in Winnebago County, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will support, that I will support, the Constitution, the Constitution, of the United States, of the United States, and the Constitution, 
and the Constitution of the state of Wisconsin, <coughs> of the state of Wisconsin, and will faithfully discharge and will faithfully discharge the duties of the duties of a member of a member of sustainable Nina committee sustainable Nina committee to the best of my ability to the best of my ability so help me God so help me God congratulations thank you Thank you very much for your service on the Sustainability Committee. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is the approval of council proceedings. Is there any objection to unanimous consent of the approval of the council minutes and proceedings of April 16th, 2024, organizational and regular session? Any objection to unanimous consent of approval? Seeing none. Those minutes and proceedings are approved. The next item on the agenda is the public hearing uh, for consideration of ordinance number 2024-05, placing a permanent zoning designation of I-1 planned business center district for the property located at 1730 Dixie Road. Is there anyone here who would like to speak during the public hearing this evening? Is there anyone here who would like to speak during the public hearing? Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing for consideration of ordinance number 2024-05 and move on to the plan commission report pertaining to the public hearing. Alderman Steiner. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, plan Commission meeting was held on April 23rd, 2024. Minutes can be found on the city website. The commission recommends council approve ordinance number 2024-05, placing a permanent zoning designation of I-1 Plan Business Center District for the property located at 1730 Dixie Road, and I so move. There's a motion by Alderman Steiner, seconded by Council President Borchert. Is there any discussion on this item? Seeing none, please cast your vote for the recommendation of the approval of ordinance number 2024-05. Cast your vote on your voting device. That motion passes eight to zero. And that concludes my report. Thank you for your report. The next item on the agenda is the public forum. Is there anyone here this evening who would like to speak during the public forum portion of tonight's meeting? would be allowed to speak for five minutes on any topic. If you would like to speak during the public forum, this would be your opportunity. Is there anyone here who would like to? I'll just please state your name and residential address. Okay, my name is Raymond Yankee. I live at uh, 203 Joseph Court, apartment two. Um, I'm, ha I'm having some problems about um, over by Western, by Green Bay Road, why, why you took the guards down and now you're putting, there's no guard and, and I'm kind of worried that someone's gonna go into them um, ditches. And I was my own, that's my only concern right now. And if, if you don't, do anything about it. I don't know if it could, you know, a car could go in it. You know, I'm not gonna give any doubt about it, you know? So I just think that you, you should put something up just by the big ponds. That's all I'm gonna say. Thank you for your comments. Is there anyone else who would like to speak during the public forum? Seeing no one, I will close the public forum. The next item is mayor council consideration of public forum issues. Can I ask uh, Director Kaiser to speak on that item, please? Certainly, thank you, Mayor. Um, I think what Mr. Yonke is referring to is the work starting on Jewelers Park Drive. Uh, the reconstruction on that road has started. Uh, one of the first steps was 
uh, taking down the guardrail and getting ready for uh, the road work to start. Uh, so traffic control barrels are lining the edge of the road over there. Uh, once that road is reconstructed, guardrail will be going back in, but uh, it's in the way for us to do uh, the construction operations right now. Thank you for your input on that. The next item on the agenda is the public input session for the 2024 through 2028 capital improvement program. Is there anyone here who would like to speak relative to the capital improvement program? Anyone here who would like to speak on that from the public? Seeing no one, I will close that item and move on to the Committee of the Whole report pertaining to the public input session, the Committee of the Whole meeting of April 29th, 2024, Council President Borchert. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the committee made no recommendations to the Council regarding the 2024-28 Capital Improvements Program. <coughs> However, there are some potential amendments as discussed. Um, and so what we'll do is we'll go take the amendments uh, individually one by one. Um, there'll be a, a motion in a second and then discussion and then we'll vote on those amendments accordingly. So with that first amendment and I think um, we're going to have them up there. Uh, number one, uh, move Doty Seawall design and surveying from 2025 to 2024. So we'll be looking for a motion and a second to get that to the floor. So moved. And second. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion with regard to the seawall design? And Director Kading, um, would you mind just kind of giving a brief synopsis of the, just real quick, just to keep it. As pre previously mentioned, um, in conversations with Edgewater Resources, our design consultants on the uh, shoreline work along Doty Park and Kimberly Point. Um, we were chit-chatting and getting the grants and getting the cycle and talking about timing. Um, given the safety concerns that we have at Doty with the failing seawall, uh, felt that it was important and imperative that we move up that time frame to, so that we start construction in 2025. And in order to do that, we need to have all of our design, survey work, and permitting work completed here at the end of 24 so that we can be out to bid early 2025 so that when uh, July and August come around, we can actually get in the ground, start the work, and complete it in a very short period of time, um, creating a much safer environment for our guests. So that's the reason for the request. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion on mm -hmm. amendment number one? Seeing no more discussion, we will, uh, there's a, one second, yeah, we're gonna be flipping back and forth a little bit. No problem. Carrie made the motion. And you seconded. And I seconded the motion. We'll be uh, voting on each of these um, through our devices, correct? Okay. Yep, there we go. So feel free to do so now. All right, motion classes. Thank you, on to the <coughs> next one. Additional parking study in TID number 10 um, using Arrowhead Fiber Carry Forward. Is there a motion? I would make that motion. Second. There is a second, all right. Um, for this situation, I'm going to ask um, Director Hayes to uh, respond or Point respond to that motion, <laughs> and then we'll open it up to council. We're going to this this kind of this flow this past, and we'll have everyone have that conversation. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I just a, a few points that I would like the council to consider uh, from my perspective as they evaluate this budget amendment. Um, I provide the following. I wrote these down because, as you know, parking is a pretty 
chatty topic, so I'll try to be brief. But, um, downtown Nina is still adjusting to the impacts brought on by the worldwide pandemic, including those that affect our downtown parking system. Without a higher degree of stability in that system, a study will likely be flawed in its analysis. Until that st stability returns, I do not believe that a study would provide the results we are hoping to achieve. There's a concern that a ramp is not necessary, and you'd only remind the council of my February 2022 memorandum to the council that not only provided a comprehensive history of the evolution of downtown parking, including all the efforts that we have made to add supply over the past few years, but also the outstanding obligations to provide almost 125 additional spaces and the likelihood that we will lose almost 400 spaces with the redevelopment of only two to three sites in our downtown. It is clear to me that a question is not, do we need to build a ramp, but rather when is the right time to build a ramp? Certainly there may be a need and a suf sufficient justification to update our downtown parking study, but I don't believe that time is now. Lastly, uh, the proposed amendment calls for the utilization of carry forward funds identified for the ins installation of fiber optic cable to Arrowhead Park. With the plan for Arrowhead being presented to the council in two weeks and the likelihood that implementation of this plan will move forward rather quickly, we could very well be in a position to install fiber into Arrowhead as early as next year. Utilizing these funds would require additional borrowing to complete this anticipated work. In summary, I would not recommend the proposed budget amendment at this time. Thank you. Alderman Paul now. Thank you. First, I'd like to address the funding. Uh, the, the Airhead Park fiber was uh, paid for by ARPA dollars. It was used, that was identified in the budget that ARPA dollars was gonna use to pay that. That's why I identified that as a possible funding source, or a funding source, but I'd like to Specify, you know, the assum you know, I think it's imperative in our current fiscal environment with our debt services, we spoke about at length at our workshop that we be cognizant of these larger expenses such as this. And I think a fifty thousand foot view is this is the perfect time, you know, because we to make the assumption that granted COVID we haven't recovered or hasn't leveled out, so to speak, but there's no guarantee that this isn't the new normal. And I think as I had sent out, I remember when we did the parking study in 2015, it was very beneficial and that's why I had sent it to the council. It gives us a tool to be able to explain this in 30 seconds or a minute to our constituents. I don't have that comfort right now. When I go to, just anecdotally, when I go to park downtown, I don't have an issue. And granted that's very anecdotal, but I've talked to a lot of people when I was campaigning and you know, asked them about that conceptually. They're like, oh yeah, I, seem to find spots, sometimes it's hard, but, for the, but then I tell them this kind of dollar amount, and, you know, then, it, then they really give it pause. So I think this could be really a powerful document and maybe it'll result in saying that there's a parking ramp, but this will allow the council members to, to also contribute to this study to really narrow down what specific parking ramp is required, what are the new things we might not know about, because the original parking ramp identified our lease agreements were kind of an anomaly in cities they had seen, and they're away on the lower end of the scale. So learning from that type of study, I think is very powerful on a lot of different levels, and I would hope people would vote to approve this. Thank you. Alderman Boyette, did you have a, was that a second or was that a comment that you wanted to make? It was a second. Okay, I want to make sure. So we can discuss it? Yeah, thank, yes, wonderful, thank you. Alderman, uh, Alderman Ellis. Thank you. Um, and I, I've talked to, to um, um, Alderman Paul Noir on this and, and I agree to, in, in, in a sense, that a study is, is going to be needed uh, downtown. There have been some in the past. My, my question and my concern based on the history of, of our downtown is the timeliness of that versus other things that we are currently working on. Um, as an example, when we were um, looking for a study for downtown back in 1980, 81 and 82, when we were doing phase one of the downtown project, one of the last things that we did, but we did it, was a study but we waited until we saw where all the pieces were gonna fit in because that kind of dictates potential wants, potential needs. Um, 
potential funding sources and, and location. With us having discussion coming up very quickly on the potential of doing something with, with Arrowhead Park, I, I think that the timeliness of doing the parking study would be best achieved once we've made a determination what, if anything, is going to be done at the Arrowhead site, which may then also be bringing in some other potential development over on that part of town. And for that reason, I respectfully think that we should wait until after we see where these other pieces are going to fall into place as they relate to Arrowhead. Thank you. Alderman Steiner. So I understand there's a lot of unknowns and we don't know exactly when it might move forward. I know the current CIP, it's a planning document, but I'm also looking at 18 million on the planning document for 2025. Um, from my perspective, you know, I wouldn't want to move forward without some type of study done. So it might be a question of timing, but I also want to make sure we don't lose track of it because I think that would provide valuable information. So I guess I'm just wondering, if it's approved, it doesn't mean that January of 2025 the study has to be done, right? But I feel like having it budgeted is something that is helpful to make sure it's not something that we forget about, that we move on. There's a lot of stuff that goes on. So I'm, I'm in favor of doing the study, and perhaps there's flexibility in regards to exactly when we do it so that we can finalize and formulate some of those other items. Alderman Boyette. <clears throat> Thank you. I, um, I guess I'm, I would be for this um, and doing this study um, and respectfully to uh, Alderman Ellis's comment about um, the timing, um, the history of Arrowhead Park is in excess of almost 40 years now. <laughs> and um, quite honestly, we've, we've secured the property and we have taken measures to ensure um, the location, and uh, to Alderman Paul Now's um, statement of this may be the new norm now. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that we were informed that um, the businesses have all their employees back, and so they're not potentially working from home like they were during the pandemic. And so I believe now is an actually good time to get those numbers on a study um, or in the next year um, to Alderman Steiner's comment about not having to do it tomorrow, so to speak, but just to put it in place so that we have the funding and we can recognize that it, it, we would benefit from the study. Thank you. <coughs> Alderman Hillstrom. Thank you. Um, I'm agreeing with Alderman Ellis that this is not the right time to do this. We've got uh, too many large businesses downtown that the employees haven't come back yet and we're not sure when that's going to happen, if that happens, how that's going to happen. We know they want to add employees. Um, you know, we know our commitments to many businesses downtown of over 500 spaces that we don't have for them when people do come back. Um, we know that uh, there's going to be other things coming up, but um, I just don't think this is the time to do it it's maybe two years down the road. I don't know exactly when it's going to be. We'll find out when that is. But uh, and the you know the the fifty thousand dollars. I want to see that stay in the where it is um, because we're it it's very possible we're going to need that next year. And I don't want to borrow for uh, that money when we already have it. Thank you, Alderman Lindrum. Thank you, um, Director Hayes. You are comfortable bringing this forward when you're comfortable. I mean, you've never hesitated to bring something in front of us uh, before. I, I've actually never heard you say that this is not a good time for something like this. So um, I will be voting um, in agreement with you because I know that when you feel the timing is right, downtown I have talk to employees of those businesses, um, and they still are in flux. So I feel like this would be premature and possibly a waste of money um, because it is so premature. So I know that you're comfortable bringing that 
in front of us when you think the time is right. So I'll be voting against this amendment. Thank you. Okay. Alderman Paul now. Just want to ask one question then. Uh, in regard to timing, since we've spent, I guess I'd ask Director Hayes about that. I don't know the exact dollar amount. We spent probably in excess a couple million dollars on land or allocated millions of dollars to purchase of land. We've driven forward with that kind of agenda. We have it for next year in the capital plan as of right now for $18 million. If we don't do it now, do we do it after the parking ramp's built? I mean, isn't that kind of closing the door after the cows are out, I guess? So when, would you, when would you advocate potentially doing it after the parking ramp is built or? I would ask you that question. Would you do that? I wouldn't do the study after the parking ramp is built. Neither would I. Okay. So, I, the, I, so okay. the question, Alderman Boyette, you asked the question about employees being back. To correct you, our two largest downtown employers are not back, okay. are not back I even was, closely to where they are. Because I, I, had, I had earlier asked that, and I was told that everybody was back. Everybody in this building is back. Downtown employees are not back. Alta and Theta are two companies, probably the, with the, eh, Plexus is probably the second, Theta is probably the third largest, but those, Alta by far is the <laughs> largest employer and they are not back. Thank you. Any further discussion on the amendment to the CIP? Okay, seeing none, you can cast your vote on your Voting device. All right, it is five to three. The motion, or excuse me, the amendment fails. Is it six to five? No, five, five to three. Sorry. All right. Pull up. All right. On to the next one. Um, add. Real estate marketing uh, use for redevelopment fund carry forward. All right, is there a motion? I would make a motion to add $35,000 utilizing redevelopment fund carry forward money to create a real estate marketing fund initiative or proposal. All right, is there a second? And there is a second. All right, Director Hayes, um, this kind of affects your, wait. It, it's, the past one. It was a past one, so we're, we're correcting it, so. Um, all right, Director Hayes, because it influences your uh, department, I'll let you speak on this first, and then we'll open it up to council. Mm -hmm. Sure, thank you again. Um, this one, I'm, I'm a little unclear as to the exact mission uh, of what these dollars would be allocated towards Nina continues to be marketed very successfully and comprehensively, and I, I don't believe the proposed amendment is necessary, and I say that for the following reasons. Cities available industrial sites are currently marketed on several levels. First, with the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation, they provide for the mar marketing of available sites throughout the state, including Nina. Northeast, New North, uh, the Economic Development Organization that represents Northeast Wisconsin markets available sites, again, including NENA. Lastly, the Fox Cities Regional Partnership with coordinates, uh, with coordination from the Fox Cities Chamber also markets NENA's available sites, and of course we have them on our, our website as well. Uh, these entities, but primarily, primarily New North and the Regional Partnership, forward requests for information from site selectors to the city on a regular basis. On average, I would say we receive somewhere between two and three each month. Uh, if we have sites that meet the criteria of the site selectors, we forward those sites for their consideration. Community development also provides a comprehensive website, as I mentioned, specifically for economic de development. Coincidentally, I heard from a site selector within the last month that the, uh, complimented the city on the availability of information, and our site was one of the better that he had seen. Uh, we also do more direct marketing efforts. Um, two recent examples are articles that we were able to have placed in prominent publications. I, I know you folks can't see this. Uh, one of these is Business News. 
digital picture was taken by our Deputy Director Schmidt, by the way, um, made the cover. Um, uh, Business News, it's a digital magazine that distributes to more than 840,000 executive readers and decision makers throughout North America. We will be providing an interview with this magazine again this year, in fact, next week, Monday. Um, the other magazine, Livability, Fox Cities, uh, another really, not, and I apologize for this, but very nice picture. Uh, several pictures in this particular publication of Nina. Uh, the magazine geared more to quality of life, uh, which is a, a very critical uh, component for businesses as they consider relocation and development as a site itself. We generally market the city, uh, providing information for all our sites that are available. So it's really the city first. Well, quite frankly, we, we our approach here is, um, and I, I remember a case many years ago, uh, we had a national firm looking f to relocate. They started on a, a Midwest search. That search was narrowed down to the state of Wisconsin. It was narrowed to the Fox, uh, Northeast Wisconsin. It was narrowed to the Fox Cities. It was narrowed to Nina and Menasha. The site ultimately chosen was uh, an existing building in the city of Menasha. Uh, I take that back. It's actually in Fox Crossing. Uh, but the, the value of that company, although we didn't receive the tax base, certainly had value to Nina as a community. But where I'm, I have a concern with marketing, additional marketing dollars, given our limited supply of available development opportunities here in the city. Uh, with the recent approval of Edgewater Door, RGL Logistics, a third project that's well in the works, and a tentative project for the former Lawrence site, and I say tentative, that may not happen, we will have almost no available industrial site, sites available in the city. So developing initial sites, additional sites, um, is really, I think, where our focus needs to be at this time. I also, quite, frank, quite honestly and coincidentally, that same issue happens in our downtown. Until we address our, our parking issue, it's going to be hard to attract additional development in downtown because as you know, most of our redevelopment sites are surface parking. Um, so, and lastly, um, just for clarification, the redevelopment fund uh, that I believe is the proposed source of funding for this um, was created several years ago and it, the intent of that, those dollars was to uh, provide assistance for projects that are outside of TIF districts. So we had situations that have occurred, um, <coughs> South Commercial being one, where we haven't had funds available to take up. Uh, um, take opportunities or take advantage of opportunities that have come our way. Um, I believe our hope is to build that fund to up to at least $250,000. As you can imagine, if we had the right acquisition come forward, it doesn't take long to make an expenditure of that level. So I, I'm caution with uh, reducing funds from that program for that simple reason. Uh, for these reasons, the ones I just men mentioned, I would not recommend the proposed budget amendment at this time. Thank you. Further discussion? Um, let's take a look here. Um, Alderman Polnow. Thank you. Um, thank you for that information, uh, Director Hayes. When we sat down, I didn't get that feeling of all those different initiatives that we had been engaged with, uh, but I, you know, I remember when I was counseling, and that's why I sent the memo out for, from 2013, believe it or not, in regard to what at that time was Fox Ignite, which maybe Fox Fel City's partnership is a similar thing as that. I just look at some of the things around Nina and a national-based independent marketing company seem like there would be another powerful way to get more eyes on it. And I know there's initiatives that are being in place. It's just... There's certain areas of the city, I guess maybe it's just my lack of knowledge. It seems like they go on for quite some time. And I remember from last time at council, some of these same parcels are vacant and it doesn't seem like we're getting traction with those. And I'm sure there's different variables, obviously like all these things, but you know, having been in real estate, the more eyes you see nationally, it seems to be a powerful thing. That's why I advocate for this, thank you. Alderman Nellis. Thank you. Um, I understand the concept, and in theory, um, to to have a marketing for the city to expand upon what our, our director of community development, who does an outstanding job, does. 
I believe, and, and I bring this up, folks, from, from my past life, uh, this is what I used to do for a living in corporations. It was branding, it was marketing, it was strategic planning, crisis management, yada, 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 yada. And in just 20 years, the world <coughs> has exploded from a technology and a social media standpoint. So there's many different avenues there. What Nina, what we just saw tonight is we have done a branding proposition to a degree internally, and I think that's terrific. I also think that there are many other departments which may have some forms of marketing need, and that could be for uh, employment, could be for a myriad of things. I would, I would like to take what, what Alderman Palno brought to the table and say, food for thought, should we look at down the road expanding that thought from, from that one arena, which is in this case real estate, there's many other things out there. There are many other marketing firms out there, social media firms out there that may be able to come in and take a look and say, Nina, how do you want to brand? All right, what, can, what does it look like? What do we show that is unique, relevant, and defensible <coughs> against our competition, i.e. Menasha, Fox Crossing, et cetera, as base ground for branding? So my thought process is, when we were looking to do the redevelopment again uh, for downtown back in the early 80s, we hired a firm out of Atlanta, Georgia, who only dealt with uh, major metropolitan uh, cities to help them look at what to do to redevelop, what are strengths, what are weaknesses, what are opportunities, what are threats. And they came back and, and, and gave us some very smart learning of how to market ourselves against our competition. So. Do I believe that we should peg ourselves into, into one world, which is, at, at, at this time, we're talking about real estate. And my recommendation would be is that we take that concept and say, perhaps what if we met with department heads and, and, and we met with some of the businesses, a lot of, of what our director already does, and shares that with us, and. Maybe we go in search of a, of a couple of uh, social media marketing firms that could do an analysis for the city down the road. It says, here's, here's, what, here's what your brand is. Here are some areas you're missing. There are so many different avenues to reach different groups. Some of them are in print. Some of them are electronic. And, I, and I'm thinking that it's a bigger picture that perhaps this is worth discussion. It's worth looking into. And it is absolutely worth um, going what if. <coughs> However, I don't think that just this at this price is the way that we, that, that we want to take it. I, I think that we should take, which was a great idea, great concept, and expand upon it down the road. And I think that it, that it deserves further attention from all of us. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Lundrum. Thank you. Director Hayes, in that long list of of places that you already advertise. Um, did you mention, i sorry, I can't hear very well because of my call, but did you uh, also mention your um, just newly finished long range compre um, comprehensive plan? Because wasn't that part of kind of a marketing of all of Nina over a very long period of time too, to show businesses this plan and what your vision <laughs> is possible vision I would say yes okay. so any one of those the comp plan the downtown plan the south commercial quarter plan and to Alderman Ellis's point even everything we do not just my department but all 12 of them have an impact on our ability to attract talent business industry right it the quality of life as folks know the work the work from home environment We've all heard people choose where they want to live first, and that's then they'll, they'll worry that they'll have their job that they can take anywhere, but they're going to move to where they they want the high quality or can get a high quality of life, and that's what we work on. Um, but I mentioned right first, if you're going to bring an industry or business, you got to have a site for them. And to Alderman Paulno's comment, what, the thing that I've been saying and will continue to say is we always have more sites than projects. 
um, particularly on South Commercial. That's a, that's a, that's a niche type of area. But the large industrial projects, uh, and, and Alderman Paul now remembers this, right? The industrial park, the property that we are marketing now and most likely will see be developed here in very short, short future has been there for 20 years, but it went in a matter of 12 months. Um, so that that is probably my first and most important need is how do we how do we provide more opportunities for those projects? Thank you. Sorry, I went too long. That That's was all right. more than you needed. All right. Any further discussion on the amendment? All right. Seeing none, we will move to the vote on your device, please. My device is. It's got a pair of code. There we, okay. there we go. Good job, Charlie. Joe. Joe? <laughs> <laughs> See, I told you, you're right. You're, you're right back. <laughs> All right. Uh, the motion fails uh, seven to one. Okay, moving on to the next. Um, we'll take them each there. They're all kind of in the same boat, but we'll go individually. Um, removing ADA requirements for men's restroom and remodel. Um, Chief, I know you kind of gave us a little description on that already. Um, can you kind of fill us in just on, and you can maybe talk to all three of them and as we go to save you from getting up, four of them, I guess. So we got the ADA uh, requirements for the restroom, the drug box, um, and then maybe, yeah, and then the furniture and then the carry port for the vehicle. I just set it on my computer, but now I Men, took it off. Men's What's restroom. What's the first one? Yeah, the men's restroom. Remodel. The men's restroom. Um, so rather than reconfiguring walls and everything to get wheelchairs in, we're just going to put signage in that, hey, if you can't uh, get a wheelchair, just ask the front desk and we will assist you to get to another bathroom that, that they can get in. So it's just uh, Civic wanted us to do this. Um, makes sense, but this is uh, Chief Bernice came up with this idea. Just much easier to use signage than just take down walls. And then, um, and I kind of, I went out of order here, I apologize, probably should have had that motion, but I'm gonna go ahead and let you speak on the next three, uh, the drug box. The drug box was the same thing. It's, it's fairly high to get the, the uh, prescription pills put in. Mm -hmm. So if they can't reach it, there's, there'll be a sign that says, if you can't reach it, ask the front desk and they'll come out and put it in. So the same thing, rather than paying, you know, all this money for a new drug box, with it's made out of metal, we'll just have signage put up. And, and again, then, that was a civic recommendation. Perfect. And then they reduced the amount of replacement of the ISC office furniture to chairs yeah. only. Uh, that's something we, we wanted to replace, but after uh, walking through and inspecting their furniture, uh, it's, it's still really good. It's not falling apart. The drawers open smoothly. So we decided we'd take that out and just get them the new chairs they need. Okay. And lastly, the carry forwards for the need for a vehicle purchase. That is for the ISU trailer. That was just an air. It, it said... 26,000 and I can't see it, whatever it says. So it's, we had to take the two off. So it's 6,000, whatever the number is. Okay, thank you. All right, what we'll do then, I'll need a, a motion and a second for the removing of the ADA requirement men's restroom remodel. There is a <coughs> motion and a second. Is that the one? Yep. And Alderman Boyette. Thank you, Brian. Um, Chief. Chief. I have a question. So you said you talked to Civmic regarding the restroom and that you didn't need to make modifications. You could get away with just a sign. Correct. So after you said that at that meeting, then our fire chief came forward and said they had a similar issue regarding ADA entrance to their building and they have a long list of Things that they would need to do. My question is, <clears throat> um, were Civmic specific on telling you the adaptation you could use signage? Because my thought for the fire department would be that they could use signage and have folks go to another entrance. If that's okay for you to do at PD for restroom, I'm wondering if what your feedback is on the conversation you had with Civmic regarding the ADA requirements. I have not personally spoken to Civmic. Uh, I don't know if it was Jeff. Was it Jeff? 
again, I, I'm all for ADA, but if we can save a dime, I'm all about saving the dime. Uh, this inspection was a citywide inspection done in 2016, I believe. Uh, so a lot of the requirements done citywide were completed, especially at the police department. There was a few pending projects that cost a lot of money or modifications to the structure. The one restroom that we're talking about is in our front lobby that requested to take down a kind of a structural wall to get the uh, wheelchair within that facility. With the addition, uh, we have accessible or ADA compliant restrooms now with a clear passage uh, to those facilities. So it's a reasonable modification with the sign we're able to accommodate uh, people in need. Okay, thank you, I appreciate that. that I think that's helpful. Thank Any you. further discussion on this amendment? All right, seeing none, please indicate your vote on your voting device. The motion clearly passes. On to the second one. Is there a motion for moving uh, the ADA drug box from the on that amendment? Oh, you did them all together. Perfect. Good. That's right. Good. Any discussion on the removal of the ADA drug box? Okay. Seeing none. Vote on your voting device, please. Oh, you put. It all together, okay, and that's that's fine. I, I, I probably should have allowed that conversation. Sorry about that, Char. Unanimous consent. Okay. Yeah. All right, we're ready. Hold on. <laughs> okay. What we, we thought we could do is at this point we could do. Uh, ask for a unanimous, unanimous consent based on the four motions. What would be easier for you, Char? More amendments, More amendments excuse me. Now it's three. Rookie mistake, sorry folks. Now we can vote on technically all four, correct? All four. Yes. Do you want all right. First, yeah, any further discussion about that? Sorry. On any of the four amendments regarding the police. Seeing none, let's vote on the vote device. All right. Thank you very much. On to the next one. We are looking at the use carry forwards from Bell Street in 2019 to the reduce the sanitary sewer borrowing. Is there a motion? Motion. Make a motion. Okay. All right, hold on, just checking on that. There it is. Carry your permit when moving. All right. So we have a motion from Alderman Paul now and a second by Alderman Ellis. Correct? Um, I didn't know if Alderman Ellis had the. Alderman, is that correct? Thank you. Okay. Alderman Paul now. Yeah, just uh, this is just an effort to lower some borrowing. I had discussed this with Director Kaiser. The original carry forward was 260000 So he needed some of those funds for this project. I won't get into specifics, but he was okay <clears throat> for conversations with this, reducing this in this amount to lower borrowing for sanitary sewer. Director Kaiser is just confirming that that is. Yeah, that is the conversation we had. I'm, okay. I'm agreeable to this. All right. Any other discussion on the carry forwards for Bell Street to replace sanitary sewer bar? Okay. Alderman Ludrum. Yep. Thank you. Um, after discussion with several uh, staff members, they were going to get to this anyway. So I'll be voting for both of these last two amendments. Um, these are, they were placeholders and you know we are paying interest on it. I don't know how much, but it's probably, they can just rebudget it when they need it. Um, but 
you know, like as I said, they were, this was all planned, part of your long range plan, Director Rasmussen, so to take care of these. So I appreciate that. So I'll be voting for these too. Okay. Any further discussion? Seeing none, indicate your vote on your device. Okay, motion clearly passes. On to the last one, using carry forwards uh, from the various repairs, 2021, 2022, 2023, to reduce sanitary sewer borrowing. Is there a motion? I would make that motion. There is a motion by Alderman Polnow and a second, or excuse me, a, yep, a second by Alderman Boyette. Okay, and Alderman Polnow. Uh, well, the correct, the record, the motion says Alderman Lundrum, but. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're correcting that. That's fine. <laughs> Our machine is not working with us. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, I just this is the same uh, discussion as the last motion. I had discussed this with Director Kaiser l after researching through Carry Forwards and identifying ways we can reduce borrowing now. This was the low hanging fruit, and that's all I have. Okay. Any further discussion on this low hanging fruit? All right. <laughs> Sarah needs an extra hand, right? All right. All those in favor, uh, please indicate on your voting device. Okay, motion clearly passes. All right, and that concludes the amendments. So hopefully that was enough time to <laughs> rest the voice, Mayor. All right, thank you. Thank you for your report. Actually, it gets worse the later it gets. <laughs> Sorry, <All right. laughs> we get more and more horses as the night goes on. Uh, there's nothing on the consent agenda. The next item on the agenda is reports of standing committees, regular public services and safety committee meeting of April 23rd, Chairman Lundrum. Thank you, Mayor. Reporting out from the regular public services and safety committee meeting of April 23rd, 23rd 2024, minutes can be found on the city website. Item number one, committee recommends council approve the change of agent trade name for Quick Trip Tobacco Outlet Plus 526 at 501 South Commercial Street, Agent Michelle Palno and I would so move if I could. Okay, yep. Oh, yeah. we have to go back to the Sorry. CIP? That's okay. Yeah. Okay. I need to adapt. Yeah, sure. yes. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. No, that's good. We want to make sure we do that. That's good. All right, so. So that's item number two. Item two. You need a motion to. Yep, so we need, need a motion to, <coughs> need a motion for the adoption of the 2024-28 Capital Improvements Program with the amendments as discussed. Second. Okay. Any discussion on the. Yep. Any discussion on the CIP? All right. All right. All right. Thank you. There we go. Thank you for catching that. All right. All those, uh, please indicate that on your uh, device, voting device. <laughs> All right. CIP passes. Thank you very much, everybody. Okay. Back to public services and safety. I read most of it. Um, I'll just read it again, just for clarity. Item number one, re committee recommends council approve the change of agent trade name for Quick Trip Tobacco Outlet Plus 526 at 501 South Commercial Street, Agent Michelle Palno, and I would so move. There's a motion by Alderman Lundrum, seconded by Council President Borchard. Is there any discussion on this item? Seeing none, please cast your vote on your voting device. In one second. I do just thank you. That motion passes seven to zero with one abstention. Item number two. Committee recommends council approve the single story modular home moving permit application to the vacant lot at 856 River Lawn Street with the permit being valid for one year from the date of approval and I would so move.
Yep. Yep, yep that's right. There's a motion by Alderman Lundrum, seconded by Alderman Ellis. Is there any discussion on this item? Seeing none, please cast your vote on your voting device. That motion passes seven to zero with one abstention. Item number three, committee recommends council approve resolution 2024-03, giving staff authority to apply for the Inflation Reduction Act Urban Forestry Grant, and I would so move. There's a motion by Alderman Lundrum, seconded by Alderman Hillstrom. Discussion on this item, Alderman Palmer. Thank you, Mayor. I voted against this in committee in for two reasons, and I plan to vote against this tonight. Uh, firstly, I don't think the utilization of this grant, which is taxpayer dollars, state dollars, which we all pay, is is wisely a government item. I don't think this is the role of government to cut down emerald ash borer dead trees on private property. I think that's not the place for government. I think also that takes away from you know, companies that are in that industry. Secondly, I think this is monies that are, you know, earmarked for income-based recipients, and I've always been against that type of government. I think that's a redistribution of wealth, and I think that's the definition of socialistic type activity, and I won't be voting for this. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Alderman Boyette. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so, who, I can I ask who, what department of public service brought this? Because I had some questions on it. Parks and Rec. Okay, so, who, Mike, are you available? Oh okay. Okay, I, I just have a couple of questions about it. I unfortunately was not at the meeting, so I don't know a whole lot about this. So, what exactly <clears throat> is the grant spe specified to do? The grant is specifically spe specified to do all those words um, is to offset costs for our residents in some of our lower income areas who have ash trees that need to be removed. Uh, we would not be doing that work. That would be privately contracted out, and then we would be able to help the homeowners do that work. And so these are just for emerald ash trees, or ash trees, or whatever it's called. I don't. It, it, it could be. I don't know that answer specifically, but it could be if there's a, tr a tree of need that needs to come down, I believe that that is the case. So give me, let me give you a hypothetical. I'm a resident, I meet the criteria, but I have a pine tree that needs to come down. This grant money could potentially go for that? You know, I'm not, I, I don't know the answer okay. to that question. I'm sorry, yeah. I, I cannot answer yeah, that and specifically. That's, kind of, that's where and I'm I confused. Think we're at, I think we're at the point that this is much more up here versus talking specific, unless Jerry's got, yeah. Jerry looks like he may have an answer. Well, I'll just read from Director Fink's memo okay. um, from April, April 18th. Um, <clears throat> the grant will be used for addressing the emerald ash borer problem on private property in these areas, including removal, disposal, stumping, restoration, and increasing <laughs> our community tree canopy by planting new trees. Uh, just a reminder, this resolution simply allows the department to apply for the grant. It does not commit the city to the grant. But it doesn't commit the city to accepting the grant. It's permission to apply for the grant. Right. And so if we're given the grant, then it will be used for emerald ash trees on private property, according to the according memo. To the memo. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Thanks. Alderman Ellis. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this directly affects um, um, our collective first district. We have, we have uh, many low to moderate income homes, private, some are rental, some are property owned. And uh, just within a one block of Center Street, I can tell you there are four dead trees that I know that the property owners can't afford to take down at this time. It is having the dead trees is a safety concern 
These trees can fall on houses, they can fall on cars, they can fall on people. Um, before I knew this was happening, I actually was going to suggest that we take a look at the city setting up something where if for the folks who can't afford to have these trees taken down, and it is a safety issue and it is expensive, that the city got up front and we would uh, find a company or two to work with. We'd roll it out on the tax rolls so we can get these dead trees down so we, we can do the right thing for a lot of people. So when this venue came out, it's like, this is even better. When I take a look and I respectfully dis disagree with those who, who are not in favor of, of grants, um, that in my opinion, these, these grants are there for the right reason. Uh, there are communities that have abused them, rightfully so. My years of living in Nina 68, I've never seen this once abuse a, a, a grant that came to us. <coughs> and in, in my opinion, and I, I well spoke with Trev on this too, uh, I, I highly encourage that we, we go forward with this. And this is gonna help us continue to be a Tree City USA. Thank you, Mayor. Is there any further discussion on this item? Seeing none, please cast your vote on your voting device. That motion passes seven to one. Item number four and the last item, committee recommends council approve the contract with the Jamar company to place a GeckoFlex roof coating system on the city administration building at the cost of $74,000 per their quote of March 4th, 2024. And I would so move. So motion by Alderman Lundrum, seconded by Alderman Hillstrom. Any discussion on this item? Seeing none, please cast your vote on your voting device for approval of the contract with Jamar Company. That motion passes eight to zero. And that's the end of my report, thank you. Thank you for your report. The next item on the agenda is the regular finance and personnel committee meeting of April 22nd, 2024, Alderman Erickson. Thank you, Mayor. Reporting out from the regular finance and personnel committee meeting of April 22nd, 2024, the committee recommends council approve resolution 2024-04 for traffic control service fees for special events and I so move. So motion by Alderman Erickson, seconded by Alderman Boyette. Is there any discussion on this item? Seeing none, please cast your vote on your voting device. That motion passes eight to zero. Item number two, the committee recommends council approve phase three of the city hall controlled access project in the amount of $9,402.20 using capital equipment funds and I so move. There's a motion by Alderman Erickson, seconded by Alderman Boyette. Is there any discussion on this item? Seeing none, please cast your vote on your voting device. That motion passes eight to zero. And that concludes my report. Thank you for your report. The next item on the agenda is the Nina Menasha Fire Rescue Joint Fire Finance and Personnel Committee meeting of April 23rd, 2024. That would be uh, Chairman Boyette. Thank you, Mayor. I wasn't prepared. <laughs> You're the chairman. You guys punked me on that <laughs> yeah, one. Yeah, sorry, there was a misprint in there, but you were elected chairman. So, okay, so reporting out on the Nina Menash Fire Rescue and Joint Personnel Committee meeting <laughs> of April 23rd, 2024. Minutes can be found on the city website. Committee recommends both City of Nina and City of Menasha Common Councils approve the back pay and budget adjustment for the employee as outlined in the memo for a total of $23,624.24 with the City of Nina share being $14,262.56 and the city of Menasha's share being $9,362.98 and budget adjustment through the general fund of this amount is not able to be absorbed with the 2024 budget and I would so move. 
There's a motion by Alderman Boyette, seconded by Council President Borchert. And I apologize for the error in who was reporting. Alderman Polno. Yes, I will be voting for this because I think it's the right thing to do. One thing I think, correct me if I'm wrong, this takes a, a two thirds majority to approve as it's a budget adjustment. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion on this item? Seeing none, please cast your vote on your voting device. That motion passes eight to zero. And the second item is the committee recommends both City of Nina and City of Menasha Common Councils approve the agreement for automatic aid assistance for structure. Sorry. Uh, I lost it. <laughs> structure uh, fires with the City of Appleton pending approval with both City Attorneys and I would so move. There's a motion by Alderman Boyette. Seconded by Council President Borchert. Alderman Polno. Thank you. I had voted against this committee just for the reasoning that we didn't have the actual increase in geographic area, but the chief had provided that information and this is a good deal and it's uh, definitely will be voting for this. Uh, the city of Appleton covers a lot more geographical ground than the Nina Mesha Fire Rescue, so we're in a good place. Any further discussion? Seeing none, please cast your vote on your voting device. <laughs> that motion passes eight to zero. And that concludes my report, thank you. Thank you for your report. Uh, the next item on the agenda, special committees and liaisons. Uh, the plan commission meeting has already been reported on. Next item is the Board of Public Works meeting of April 23rd, 2024, Vice Chairman Hillstrom. Thank you, Mayor Lang. The minutes from this meeting can be found on the city website. There are two council action items this evening. The first one is the board recommends council award contract 10-24 re-roof of the sign shop area at City Garage to HIS Comp. LLC in the amount of $40,434, and I would so move. There's a motion by Alderman Hillstrom, seconded by Alderman Lundrum. Is there any discussion on this item? Seeing none, please cast your vote on your voting device. That motion passes eight to zero. The second item, the board recommends council award contract 13-24, right turn lane at the Winnicani commercial intersection to Vinton construction in the amount of $148,308.43, and I would so move. There's a motion by Alderman Hillstrom, seconded by Alderman Boyette. Is there any discussion on this item? Alderman Palmer. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just one quick question. The Director Kaiser, we're overall on the budget, I can't remember off the top of my head, the budgeted amount and where are we at as far as do we have enough to cover this whole project, all the land assemblage and all that? Um, I'd have to go back and look at where we are on the design and real estate side of it. Uh, we had 200,000 and for the construction for 2024. Mm -hmm. um, I wanna say we had 115 and for design and real estate. We are still working through the real estate part of it, um, so I don't have a final number there yet. Okay, thank you. And then the one follow-up in dovetailing back to Director Rasmussen's Carrie Ford uh, uh, new strategy as far as uh, if there's any monies left over, will that just revert to a capital fund or will that go to lower borrowing? I guess Director Rasmussen, just, that would be directed at you. You're saying if he comes under budget? Yeah, say it's 10,000, where will those monies be channeled? And then the, the under budget, we, we would absorb that if, you know, because we have the other part portion already budget for it, so we can absorb that into our borrowing. Okay. Reduce our borrowing. Okay, maybe. thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, please cast your vote on your voting device. That motion passes eight to zero. That concludes my report, Mayor. Thank you for your report. Is there any report from the Community Development Authority? No report this evening, Mayor. Thank you. Is there any report from the Sustainable NINA Committee? 
Yes, Mayor. Uh, reporting out from the April 24th, 2024 meeting, uh, we are lucky enough to induct uh, Kirsten Sandvik tonight into Sustainable Nina's. So we're very fortunate to have her. And I just want to remind everyone again that we will be providing uh, rain barrels for no cost if you purchase the spigot part online yourself. It's about $15. So if you would like to do that and have one of those provided to you, please contact me or the Sustainable Committee um, Chair, Carol Casmore and Community Development. Thank you. Thank you for re your report. Berks from Muller Museum, is there any report? There is um, uh, from our meeting on March 27th. Uh, just catching fire auction begins June 5th, uh, carries through June 15th, and then there's a live auction on the 12th, which will begin at 645. And then uh, the spring, uh, <coughs> spring, excuse me, the spring fund drive, Help Us Grow, um, starts April 15th, or has started April 15th, um, and runs through June 15th. That's all on my report. Thank you for your report. Um, Alderman Weber is absent this evening, so we'll postpone his um, report from the Parks and Rec Commission to the next council meeting. Next item, are there any petitions? There are no petitions. Are there any council directives? Is there any unfinished business? Is there any new business to come before council? Seeing none, the next item is that we will be moving into a closed session. Is there a motion to move into closed session? So moved. I didn't catch who. There's a motion by... Uh, Borcher? Okay. There's a motion by Borcher, seconded by Boyette, to move into closed session. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Are there any opposed? We will move into closed session. The City of Nina is pleased to provide video recordings of City Council meetings. Nina residents can get information about City Council meetings, City Committee meetings, meeting agendas, and other documents from the City website, www.ninagov.org. Nina residents can express their opinions about City issues by contacting the Mayor's office, contacting their city alderman, or completing the electronic feedback form on the city website. All public portions of the meetings are recorded in entirety and are not edited.